questions for Chris Barraza. You guys think you're going to make it when that show was going on and on and we're kind of running out of spots? Uh, yes and no. It kind of got kind of got a little bit uh, nerve wracking because we're for the last one to get picked next to and you know it's just kind of the thoughts of are we going to make it? Are we not? Do we do good enough in the tournament and in the season? And I'm just I think all in all we're all we're all pretty happy that we made it and looking forward to this upcoming regional. So now what? What's the approach? That um, you know that you made it. You know, I mean, same approach as kind of we've had, and I know I've had in the uh, Pac-12 tournament, just as far as pitching, you know, throw as many strikes, be able to locate the ball, and not have too many, you know, errors as far as pitch location. And as far as hitting, I mean, I've played on a lot of teams, and this is probably one of the best hitting teams that I have faced in the fall and have seen, you know, in the dugout and in the bullpen. As long as they keep that up, I think it should be pretty good. You've been on the, the losing end of some pretty rough games, um, but then some of your last outings here, I mean, having a guy on third, nobody out in a tie game. How are you able to, to deal with being in one of those rough ones and then being in another bad situation and just it's a completely different thing for you? You know, it's a, it's a tough place to be put into, but, you know, I've had my kind of ups and downs as far as, you know, when you... When you face Oregon, when you face Oregon State, and you know it sucked to be put in that situation, and you know the outcome, which it happened. But you know, I was, I'm glad I was able to bounce back, and you know, not make the same mistakes in the tournament that I did in the season when we played them. So what did you learn from those experiences? Um, well, for as far as you know, those two games, I made a lot of mistakes as far as location. There was a few mistakes that I threw, maybe an inch or two down the middle when it was supposed to be outside or inside or, you know, elevated. And, you know, you just took advantage of that and, you know, it went in their favor. How do you, oh, go ahead. So how do you deal with all those failures psychologically? How, how do you bounce back? Um, I mean, it's hard to, you know, forgive and forget, but at the same time, you know, it's, I'm going to get another chance. So I can't really dwell on the past and my last outings and, you know, just fix a small thing. Well, and that Stanford game, the last game of that series, I believe you gave up the home run to Rios yeah. that caused it to go to, to extra innings. Was that an example of one of those where it was just slightly off that that, the pitch, that Chip and Dave send you back out for another inning? Is that a, a, a case where it's like, I know that they still trusted me? Oh, yeah, 100%. I knew they still trusted me, and I knew I had a second chance to, you know, bounce back. And when it wasn't easy, I gave up the three-run home run to Rios and basically tied the game. And, you know, I wasn't thinking in my head, don't make the same mistake. You know, I, I got, I believe I got good stuff, and, you know, sometimes I kind of let that get away from me. But it was one of those outings where, yeah, get another chance. I just kind of give them what, give them what I got to give, and if they hit it, then that's not good. You stuck out Carter Graham, and that, that was that a slider? Yes, it was. That was. Okay. So now... Going forward to the Pac-12 tournament, you're in this situation where you've got a runner on third, nobody out. Um, usually in that situation, the other team defended them. Nick was saying that he would talk to you and just kind of slow down a little bit. How did you get through that situation? Um, so, yeah, Nick McClary he told me to like, take a deep breath because, you know, I, I normally get sped up a lot. And I kind of let my emotions get the best of me sometimes, which I'm getting a lot better at. And, you know... He said that when we played um, Oregon State, Oregon State and Oregon, it's okay, take a deep breath, got to, like, because, you know, it's in that situation, it's not easy. And, you know, took a deep breath, didn't really think too much, because, you know, I, I tend to think a lot, and, you know, I just got the pitch and located it, and I hit the ball, hopefully it hit for someone. And, yeah. What's your max velocity in this year? Uh, I believe it's been 98. 98. How does that compare to last year? Oh, it's been a it's been a significant uh, big change. You know, last year I was I varied from speed to I want to say 87 to 95 in that wide variety of range. And you know, this year I really took advantage of the time that I had during you know fall and winter and Thanksgiving break like breaks and you know I re got in the weight room through and you know it played 
played a big part of me being able to maintain my velocity throughout the postseason. Is your mindset or approach any different when you're going out for eight innings versus the ninth inning? Um, because normally when I get put in the games, they're normally relatively close. You know, it's a three or it's a one run ball game, three run ball game. Enough in the past, it's if we're down by four, there's there's always that chance that they might tie the game or or take the lead. Which is, you know, it's it's kind of nerve wracking at the same time because you know you don't want to give up those runs, but you no, know, I relatively relatively don't think about you know giving up the lead. Kind of just look at my look at the pitch comm and see what see how it wants me to throw and try to locate as best I can. As a staff, you guys have had some trouble this year putting guys away. Mm-hmm. Get ahead of two or one two. Is that just location that yeah. is making them safe? Yeah, I mean. I know I'm, I I play a big part in you know, the mislocation, but I mean, as a bullpen, you know, we, we we made a few mistakes and they didn't really go in our favor, and we realized that, and I think this kind of Pac-12 tournament really kind of changed us and just our mentality as far as, you know, throw the pitch in the location, and if they get a hit, you just have to do that. Cool. Um, you said in your bio that uh, Arizona was your change school. To remittal. Did they express any interest in you coming out of high school? Uh, yeah, they did. They, they didn't give me an offer, but they, you know, I went on a visit. Um, I only had, you know, U of A and New Mexico State and a few JUCOs. And, you know, New Mexico State was the only offer that I had, you know, as far as D1. And it was a fairly good, you know, scholarship. So just, it was a little bit out of state, but I still got those benefits and my academics and. Were you frustrated or angry about U of A not giving you a nice offer? You know, I was, I was a bit, you know, I was I wouldn't say upset, but I was kind of, you know, frustrated. But I'm I'm glad I I'm here now, and I got the opportunity to play at home and be close to my parents and be able to fulfill that dream of playing at U of A. So starting with the Sunday game against Stanford, you guys started to use full team huddle mm-hmm. before the game, the, the batters that gets invited to the pitchers. Yeah. First of all, what was your reaction when that was brought up, and then what do you think that guy, that does for you guys? Um, you know, it was, it was kind of new to us, because at times, you know, I think we kind of divide ourselves, and now we're all as a team. And I think that really kind of created a good, you know, aroma of just confidence and, you know, believing in each other. And, you know, we had our fun in the circles. And it was a good addition. TCU is known for its ability to steal bases. As a pitcher, what's kind of your job in terms of keeping runners on first base and trying to not let them steal? Yeah, I mean, uh, Coach Lon does a good job of, you know, making sure we have good lake times and we have good holds. And as long as we, you know, kind of keep that up, I think we should be pretty good. And I know we have a few good catchers behind the plate to, to help us. Nick mentioned changes, like using the pitch clock to your advantage and sometimes waiting, sometimes trying to throw quicker. Do you think that kind of can help you in terms of kind of keeping them off balance and not knowing when you're going to throw your next pitch? Yeah, I mean, I know for a pitcher it's kind of, you know, we don't have a lot of time and you look at the clock and it's, you know, five seconds. But... You know, a long hold picks really, really have a good advantage to the pitchers because you know the hitter's just standing in the box and you can't really call time because you know you only have a certain amount of timeouts before you get a ball or a strike called on you. So I think that kind of plays in in the pitcher's favor. They changed it this year too, right? Like you can't just step off and mm-hmm. do the fake throw thing anymore. Yeah, so you can pick as many times as you want to first, but when you go to second, you can only pick I think once or twice. And the uh, middle infielders have to go towards the bag. So that that was a big change from last year to this year.